Yes, good day. How are you, everybody? Uh, this is Mr. Orvan, and again, this is IC3 Module A Computing Fundamentals uh, Visual Lesson for Lesson Number 7 Security and Maintenance. I'm going to divide uh, this um, video into two parts. So, this is the first part. Uh, let me just share my screen. Okay, lesson number seven, security and maintenance. This is still module A. Okay, our objectives are to explain the need for security, describe how to keep your username and password safe, describe the risks presented by virus, worms, trojans, and malware, describe the risks associated with network connections, protect your information when using public computers, Describe the risks presented by social engineering and phishing. And describe methods for protecting against risk. Uh, and the second part of the lesson, which I will make in this next video, will describe, I will explain how we, how and why to backup and restore your data and your settings. Explain how to reset personal devices to their factory settings. Describe basic troubleshooting techniques and understand basic troubleshooting techniques. Let's start. Why do we need security? As soon as you connect to a computer and to a network, you're actually vulnerable. You expose that system and the information stored on it to the potential risks associated with networking. When your network or when you're connected to another computer, especially the internet, you are going to be public. I mean, uh, you're connecting to a public network. That means anybody and everybody can see each other. Okay, so whatever data you're hiding, whatever privacy you have, it will be exposed. Okay, information stored on a network computer can, and in theory, be accessed by any computer connected to the network. If the network provides internet access, the risk increases, of course. Hackers employ many different methods to obtain what they want. What are hackers? Hackers are people. Hackers can be computer also, but also it was programmed by a people or a person. Uh, so when you say hacker, it's actually a man who have malicious intention, meaning malicious, malicious intention, we are actually uh, classifying it as a crime. To somebody who wants uh, the hackers, is somebody who wants to store something, a data, uh, so an e-resources, data, your money, bank account, and so on. So your time, your identity. So these are the things that can be stolen. You must take steps to protect your computer and its data, and that's why we need security. The first. Okay, the first thing that you need to have is to have your username and your password. Okay, so that's the first step, the first stage to have an authentication. Okay, uh, authentication means you are that person. So how will that uh, system or network know that you are that person because of the username and the password that you only know, you should only know. Okay, a strong passwords are use a minimum of six characters. That's already thing of the past. We don't go for six or eight characters anymore. If you're still using six or eight characters, then uh, you're already outdated. Okay, so right now you're going to around at least 10 characters. Okay, with big numbers or big letters or capital letters, small letters number zero to nine special characters okay you have to use that okay uh select one that will be easy to remember but difficult for someone else to guess um i'll give you an example for example uh, the word um the word seven s e v e n so instead of you writing that as s E, the E you can use three. The V, okay, can be capital, small 
it doesn't matter. The E again, you can make it 3. So 7 can become S3V3N. Okay, so that kind of trick we can use on uh, your user or your passwords. Okay, avoid using the names of people close to you. Avoid using variations of your name or including your name, address, or birth date. Uh, so that's yes, correct. Okay, but again, you have to look for the easy to remember. Uh, and if that's not also related to you, you're going to have difficulty uh, remembering it. Avoid using a variation of a password that may be easy to guess. So, okay, keeping your account safe, your account protects your profiles and your reputation. So in a geotech, I'll give you an example. Uh, you do not share your account information. That's a no-no at geotech, okay? So when somebody, Okay, another student asks you, oh, I cannot access, I need to, uh, to email somebody. I cannot access a computer in the computer lab. So you do not do that because he might or she might do something else that, you know, that make your account vulnerable. And uh, also, Geotech found, found out about that. It's going to be a case against you. Okay. Do not hide your password near your computer. Do not use the same password for all your accounts. Okay, so these are the things you have to remember. Do not use the same password for all your accounts. It's it's going to be tiring to remember. So, by the way, do not share your password through SMS text messages. Okay, so do not do that. Uh, if you want really to share something, you capture it as a picture. Okay, it's going to be difficult for the machine, the computer to track down the picture. Okay, at least. Okay. Okay, you change your passwords at all times. I mean, uh, a best practice is at least three months. Okay, that's the, uh, that's the best practice or even two months. Better, two months. Two months if you can keep it up. So you change your password. But for me, three months is enough. Okay. Uh, the reason behind that is that if a hacker uh, write a program to generate passwords that's possibility for you, okay, it will take the machine, the computer to, you know, uh, take some time, so maybe four months, okay, to finish, okay, cracking a password, okay. But uh, since you change it by three, after three months, then the machine will not know your password anymore. Then it's again another start. Okay, so I mean there might be uh, hackers that can do that. Okay, anyway, the the lesson that we have is how to change your password. Uh, the first one is you go to start settings, accounts, sign in options. Okay, uh, but this is for local computers. If your computer is a network computer, let me just check if I can go for start and settings. And let me see accounts, if that is possible. Mm, sign in options. Okay, sign in options here, password. Okay, so it's not available here because my computer is a uh, network, okay, Com uh, what we call this, a network computer. So I need to log in to a domain. So that's why I need to use control alt delete. So I'm not sure if you're going to see this. I press control alt delete, but I'm sure it didn't show in this video. But anyway, anytime you press control alt delete, it's gonna be there or another way. I'm just going to close this uh, setting sign in options. Okay, but in your exam uh, or in your lessons, you have to do this. Maybe in the practice, you will practice this. Okay, uh, you have to put on the user uh, the new password and a hint. Okay, which you will only uh, invent whatever hint you want. For example, if your password is about love, so that, that that's your hint. Okay, L O V E, love. That's it. Okay. Uh, then finish. Then that's how you do it. If again, if it's a network account, you press Control Alt Delete and change your password. 
Now for Geotech, you can also go to your My Geotech, uh, and then there is a change password there that is catered by office.com. Okay, now when you leave the computer another uh, and you log into a network computer, it's also advisable that you lock the system if you want to work again on this computer. For example, you are in the computer laboratory, you already log in with yourself, log in, uh, log in account. If you want to work again on that computer and you're doing something else and you just save it and you want to come back at the same uh, you know same environment some some files are open and so on you can just lock it okay but of course we're always um, uh, how to lock it of course uh, it's either you click start power here and then power and then uh, there's a lock it should be having a lock here but it's not set on my computer Okay, but anyway, the other way is again control alt delete. Okay, so let's proceed. Okay, let's uh, now go for uh, the definition of virus. Or virus in general is the one that is harmful, harmful to your computer. It's a program that's malicious, designed to take control of system operations and damage or destroy data. Uh, that's why it usually will come from. Uh, from email or any devices or any means to enter your computer. So flash drives and so on and so forth. Okay. It display harmless messages on the screen, but uh, for sure it is damaging already your system. Okay. It corrupts or destroys data files. It erases the contents of an entire hard disk. Uh, you've seen that before, but I think those viruses is gone anymore uh, already. I mean, like when you have a flash drive, you cannot see your files. When you enter, uh, uh, when you insert that flash disk USB drive on a computer, okay, you cannot see your files it, because of that virus is hiding all the files and so on. So that's one example. But now there's another uh, there's another term or another harmful program, which is a worm. Okay, Worm is a self-replicating program that consumes system and network resources. So virus will destroy directly the system. Okay, uh, it it is very harmful. But worms is another thing. Worms is like you, for example, you download this worm. It's, it looks like a, a, a picture. Okay, and then later on, once you go to another system, it is there and then duplicate and duplicate and duplicate, duplicate. Okay, the problem with that is that he's getting your resources and damaging it because he will do some process okay then process and process and process that's the problem with one okay then it if you put that in a network okay i put i'm a hacker i put it on a network what will happen to your network it's very very slow until it already crashed when it's crashed what will happen nothing no performance nothing will happen imagine if that is a uh what they call this a bank okay banking system so if you got a worm if you put a hacker put a worm in a banking system then once it is it crash and then no no transaction at all okay now there's another term called the trojan okay it's a program designed to allow hacker remote access to a target computer system so a Trojan is like a program that I will send you and then later on, that's my way of accessing your computer. Okay, so that's a Trojan. Uh, Trojans are installed on a target system and the user runs the infected application, allowing a hacker to take control of the target system. Usually it's just going to be there. Okay, in module C, I will try to show you a video of examples of this living online. Okay. How about the malware? Uh, malware is malicious software. Uh, it's also virus uh, in a sort of because it's gonna be uh, your computers need will be infected. Okay, uh, but there are two examples or two types of malware: the spyware and the adware. A spyware is going to be on your computer and when the time is ready, he's going to send your information to whoever he, <laughs> it came from, okay, or whatever it came from. Uh, it will just pass all your cookies information. You remember the cookies? 
Okay, because the cookies, remember when you log into any uh, web page or uh, Geotech, for example, CertiPort, for example, uh, you remember there is a Windows asking you to save this, okay? In a desktop, uh, usually me, in a desktop, I don't save my login details. I always, never, okay? I always type my username and password, okay? That's the reason because the cookies, once it is containing your or save your username and password, then it can be sent to anybody. Okay, if there is a spyware here, but oh, also we have a, uh, a counter measure for that. So there should be no, uh, not much of that worry. Now an adware is a software application that automatically displays or downloads advertisements. Why is it not good? Because of course it will bother you a lot. And uh, the benefit of this adware is just, you know, companies who want to send you advertisements, it's going to be using this adware. Okay, once installed, spyware monitors your activity on the internet and conveys the information to the spyware originator, just I mentioned this. So remember this cookies. Huh? So one way to prevent this is to delete your cookies. So if, uh, because cookies, anyway, we'll discuss this in the module C. Uh, these are files, okay? that is being saved by your computer so that when you come back to the same uh, web page, it will not download anymore all this initial login page or login details, okay? So it will be faster next time around, okay? And like when you delete the cookies, when you go to this website, it will still download all the pages before you can open it, okay? That's the only, diff I mean, that's, the, the, that's why there are cookies. Now, it's a good thing, uh, but it has some danger, okay, some risk. That's why, I don't know, uh, but for me, my advice, delete your cookies once in a while, I mean, like, even once a month, okay, so that's my best practice. Okay, so I told you already, a cookie is a small text file placed on your computer by a web server. Cookies can be used to store usernames and passwords and track browsers. So that's the definition. Now we have the Windows Defender to defend that, uh, your computer from spyware or adware. But at the moment, for example, for me, uh, for Geotech, I have uh, F Secure Client Security Premium. So this is given by, I mean, installed by Geotech to my laptop. So that already is my defender, okay? Uh, antivirus and so on and so forth. Okay, but uh, that's why uh, you cannot have two antivirus in your system, it will clash. So you have to remove something, okay? One of those, or yeah, you have to just keep one. Okay, now another risk is when you are having network connection, it's either you are wired or you are wireless, okay? Uh, wired connection is safe if you are at a company, okay? Meaning if you, you came to a company, they, uh, they have a wall socket, then you have a cable, you connect that, that's gonna be, um, uh, that's gonna be secure, okay? So like the computer laboratories that we have, we, it has, it is connected by a cable, okay? But if you are outside, for example, uh, for example, you go to a coffee shop, they have a wired connection, and then you connect uh, via cable. So it's also not secured because it's a public establishment, okay? Now, a wireless is always vulnerable, okay? So always vulnerable. Anybody can just uh, park at your house and just hack your signal, meaning uh, receive your signal over the air, and let's see if whatever I can hack from your computer. But uh, also, uh, if you're at home, that's not likely to happen. Of course, if I'm uh, if I'm a hacker, I'm oh, uh, I'm I have malice, meaning I have uh, the intention to rob you or get something from you. I will not do it in a house, okay? Because that's gonna be. Uh, I mean, for 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 example, me, I'm not that rich, so nobody will just park there and then look for my uh, accounts and that's not gonna be worth the while, worth, worth his effort and time. 
So it's gonna be on a, a big company which has a lot of money. It's gonna be like that. Okay, but uh, aside from that, of course, if you are having wireless, it's better for us to, you know, but because it's not only about money, it's about identity. Maybe you are a friend of another uh, big time, you know, uh, like the royal family, for example. You are a friend of that and maybe that information that they can get is also gonna be, uh, you know, uh, useful, okay, to infiltrate that. So in, in this uh, situation, it's really advisable to secure your connections and so on. Whenever you connect to a public network, always identify the network to the operating system as a public network. If you use Wi-Fi, always connect to an infrastructure network avoid participate, participating in ad hoc networks. What do you mean by ad hoc? Ad hoc is a, just a one-on-one uh, -on -one network, okay? So peer-to-peer, -peer. okay? Now, using public computers, you sometimes go to a country and, uh, you know, you need a connection, although we have smartphones already, but uh, yeah, but still, it might, come to a situation that you will need to rent a computer uh, somewhere, okay? Uh, of course, if you use an account, any uh, anything, okay. even, even at Geotech, for example, um, let's say you use your login account there, okay? It is a pub considered public because anybody can use a computer there, but also it's secured because it's inside Geotech, but Anyway, the same thing, maybe you're logged into Facebook, oh no, no, that's not social media accounts. And he might or she might, uh, the one who will penetrate your uh, account, he might use that, okay, to again, identity theft, uh, can pretend like you, or that he or she is you, okay? So you always clear caches and cookies. You can set this up on, uh, you can do that on the settings of your uh, web browser. You clear the data, I told you once in a month, once a month, you can do that. And log out, okay, log out of all your accounts or at least, uh, uh, most likely log out your account. If you log in with your Geotech account in that computer, you log out, okay. Uh, now what's social engineering? It's one of the practice of tricking users. Uh, so again, one of the, uh, what they call this, one of the practice of the hackers, not the hackers, but those who have managed, even if not a ha hacker, okay, uh, they will just be social with them and so on, and then they will tell, oh, can I borrow your account and so on and so forth. Okay, if you do that, uh, if it is really necessary, for example, uh, this is CertiPort account that your account in uh, taking the exam. Mr. Orvin asked for your password. It's not social engineering, but I'm giving you an example. When can the time that I can ask your password? Okay. Uh, but anyway, CertiPort is, I know already your username and password. But in any instance, if somebody asks you for the password, temporarily you can change it and then later on, bring it back or if you give the password uh you ask him or her okay are you finished then i have to uh change my password already like for example in some customer support you have a problem in your account and so on and so forth he asks you for it okay you can give it but change it afterwards okay especially okay if it is also the same password in other accounts but Again, a suggestion is do not use the same password with other accounts, okay? Other login accounts. Okay, typical targets of the social engineering strategy include anyone who has access to information about systems. Uh, so you can watch this in movies, right? Uh, including secretaries, janitors, some administrators, like if, uh, for example, yeah, uh, some of the movies, um, I, I, I forget. For example, Mission Impossible, the movie, okay? The, the computer guy will talk to the security and then, uh, you know, get the ID and so on. Uh, so the ID can be uh, an access, okay, to their company, to their system and so on. 
So that's a, those are examples. Uh, the best way to guard against becoming a victim of social engineering is to recognize common social engineering practices. Posing as a technician and using the implied authority to cause employees to divulge information. Uh, the bottom line of this, even you are social or having friends, okay, if they ask you for a username password, do not give it, okay? So that's the bottom line. Even hint, okay? Password hint, do not give it. Okay, uh, what is phishing? Phishing are through email, okay? As simple as that. Okay, phishing or phishing, P, P H I is pronounced as F, phishing. So it's the process of trying to gather sensitive information. Typically, a phisher sends a legitimate looking email message. So he will ask for an email message. Uh, so how to, you know, counteract that? You have anti-phishing. Uh, and also package that into your antivirus. So that will be okay. But sometimes it goes through your email. Uh, the best way to detect, for example, it says it came from Geotech. Okay, you look for the email address and for sure, uh, if you found out something fishy about it, then uh, do not just always answer and divulge information. For example, it's asking for your name, uh, your account details, your account password, change it, go to this website. Okay, if there are things like this, stop okay some information has to be done ask you to log in stop okay so do not do it observe okay look for details email the email address is very very important it it says in the subject it came from geotech but the email address is different domain again that's already a phishing email okay uh so Always be careful with emails before you open. Okay, do not fall into this trap. So it must, for example, the, the message is sensible. Second, it is not going to ask you to click and then uh, change your information. It will not lead you to another website. So those are the things that has. To. Uh, if you're already suspecting, you call the person who sent this email and so on. Okay. Okay, antivirus software is very important to protect yourself. Use antivirus software to scan your computer to known viruses and to eliminate any viruses that are discovered. Most antivirus applications include anti-spyware components and most of these antivirus have everything. You can manually start or scan on your system and you can schedule a regular scan. So there will be a regular scan and you can manually, for example, you insert a USB drive, right click scan. You can do that. Okay. Uh, as soon as you install antivirus software, scan the computer for any possible viruses that could already be resident. You should also re schedule regular system scans. Additionally, subscribe immediately for automatic updates. So again, if you bought, if you buy, if you will buy an antivirus, and that's already licensed, of course, update it. Okay, always update it. Okay, do not let your computer not update it. Okay. Uh, first reason is you already bought it. Second is that you need the updates. Okay, but uh, even if you have antivirus, you can avoid viruses. Okay, by again saving and scanning all files you download from the internet before running or opening them. Uh, scanning removable media before copying or opening files contained in the media. It will some of the antivirus automatically. Uh, it will scan the uh, USB drive, for example. Okay. Always configure your antivirus application to scan all incoming and going email messages. So if you're doing this manually, uh, for now, for me, uh, my antivirus is fine. I mean, it's given by Geotech. It is already set. But for you, try to do all of these things. Okay, when an antivirus program is running, it will scan the files you select. Uh, sometimes the antivirus will ask, it will just give you the list, okay, of these files, and you can delete it. Sometimes if the virus is too strong, they cannot delete it. So you can quarantine that one, 
Okay, that means it will just be on a folder and it will not, it cannot be out of that. Okay, so same thing as the concept of quarantine right now. It will not go out. Now, once the update came and it can now delete that file, then it's going to be, uh, yeah, it can be deleted. Okay, uh, what else? It is extremely important to keep antivirus software up to date and configured to automatically download updates. It is equally, equally important to keep the email scanner and residence scanner portions of the applications turned on. Okay, what is a firewall? A firewall is actually a series of rules, okay, and codes to filter in and out of packets in a network. Okay, for example, at Geotech, uh, before, before this information goes out of the internet, okay, they can filter it. For example, uh, they can filter that a packet cannot come here if come here if it is a uh, pertaining to a website, that website. Okay, so it has an address. Okay, that uh, from this device or this device in the software, you can configure that. Okay, this address cannot come inside Geotech. So you can do that, and that's a firewall. Now, a computer also, if you connect directly and you're not in a network, you can have your firewall on your computer. Very basic firewall. Okay, so you can see in the illustration, this is a firewall. Actually, in a house, it's really a term in a house. Okay, there's a wall somewhere outside. Okay, that is if you're connected to another house, you have a wall that when the fire is from the other house, it will not reach you. Okay, so that's that's not that much seen here at uh, Oman because in Oman because houses are really separated from each other. But if you have apartments that are connected to each other, it must have a firewall. Okay. Uh, in an organization, a network administrator can set up and implement security rules, as I've told you, uh, so that whatever in and out okay packets from the network you can filter filter means stop okay it will not come in it will not go out okay so something like this uh and i told you if you have your computer directly connected to the internet you are not in a network you can set up your desktop firewall okay but if you have an antivirus you can just uh you can already you know uh you do not have to do this anymore but if you want, uh, Windows, for example, has this firewall. Challenges. Of course, since you're blocking a website, for example, then it's going to be difficult for your user to reach that. Uh, some of the companies or uh, some of the educational institutions before when YouTube started, uh, they block YouTube because it is very, for example, uh, since it is streaming, Okay, meaning you're watching the video uh, at real time from their server, then it took all the resources of the network. The network is very slow. But later, they have to remove that because they cannot block it because uh, most of the materials, teaching materials, also can come from YouTube. Okay, so that's one of the example of this firewall challenge. Okay, there are also monitoring software. So in a network, for example, it's not only uh, that they are taking care of our security just by giving you antivirus. So with inside the servers also, it must have those sophisticated software and one of this monitoring software. So it is implementing the triple A, for example. What do I mean by triple A authentication? Uh, authorization and auditing. So something like this. Authentication are the username and password. Uh, authorization is giving you all the rights and the auditing is lagging of your activities and lagging of not lagging, uh, meaning writing or keeping data of what website was used or something like this. Okay, uh, how about buying online or purchasing online e-commerce okay is it uh safe 
supposed to be or it should be safe okay because nowadays especially we're in this pandemic uh we really have to secure all our transactions uh, but we have to do it online we have to pay online we have to buy online and it must be safe okay now the only way that it can be safe is be selective. If you want to shop online, shop from companies that have good reputation and you can see all of this uh, uh, from the internet. Uh, it's, for example, Alibaba. If I buy from this, can I really get something? Okay, so uh, yes, proven already from my side, I can buy from Alibaba. Uh, it's coming here and I can receive the goods two weeks, three weeks, okay. Uh, those are the things if you're paying online okay so some of this for example rop uh in oman of course if you're paying for your license paying for your registration so it is safe so you can trust that okay let's proceed exercise skepticism so what is skepticism uh in protecting yourself you have to exercise you have to be like reluctant to do those things okay you have to be thinking is this safe is this always safe you have to be paranoid okay so that's the only way you can uh, protect yourself okay for example if a company offers a deal that seems too good to be true research the deal okay for example they send a message to you remember those uh sms or somebody calling you you won uh you won uh, 10,000 rials, but before you can get this, you have to deposit 300 rials to this account and so on. So something like this, uh, you have to be, you have to exercise skepticism. Okay, if the company is not known to you, be sure to research it before purchasing anything online. Call the contact numbers listed on the site. Look for a client list for, or for customer references reviews. Okay, search the internet if you uh, if you can trust those websites. Okay, always use secure transaction by using only website that has HTTPS or the hypertext transfer protocol secure with the lock. Okay, sign here HTTPS with the lock sign here. Okay, HTTPS protocol and a lock icon in the address bar indicate that you are in a secure area of the vendor's website and that the tra transactions can be conducted safely. Web transactions are secured using encryption, which is the process of converting data into unreadable form. Okay, so it's like putting a message on an uh, envelope, okay, but that envelope cannot be opened. Okay, it, can, it will still be put on a box with a lock and so on and so forth okay so a digital certificate is part of this data okay that is part of the security uh you can see here the picture certificate information okay if this is not there then that's that means the website is not secured okay a digital certificate is a small file that provides the identity of an individual or company over the internet a trusted third party called a certificate authority. There is a company that always certify. Okay, uh, for example, as I said, an example, Alibaba. Okay, Alibaba is uh, like Amazon, right? Uh, AliExpress. Okay, let's 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 use AliExpress. Uh, third party, another company that says, okay, AliExpress, you are certified. And this is your digital certification. Uh, and then anytime somebody will contact you, okay, this certificate proves that you are secure. Okay, you can have the transaction. So with that, there should always be that HTTPS and that lock sign. Another way to secure a uh, connection is through the virtual private network. Now this is uh by implementing a line from one setup or system to another system through the internet because internet is public now with the use of encryption and authentication then that two companies using the internet to communicate they can have a secured line 
okay, that they're only the ones sending each other messages. Okay, so this is the concept of VPN or virtual private network. Okay, using VPN. Telecommuters, remote employees, and traveling employees use VPN to connect to their company networks from the outside. So an example is me also using the software that we have here. Uh, for example, I'm actually at home right now and I want to use the resources at Geotech. The only way that I can use that is by opening this ne ne Dell Sonic wall. Okay, I will connect to the server there, net extender. Okay, so that's an example. A VPN, this is a VPN setup, okay, that gives me at home uh, a direct connection to the Geotech server so that through the internet, okay, I can use that as if I am inside of Geotech, okay? So that's what's happening. So let's me go back. Okay, so I'm going to cut this video for now. Um, let me just stop sharing. Okay, I'll come back to the topic. Uh, backup and restore on the next video. Video. Okay, so anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Have a nice day. Bye.